kids and families and friends. Over the next six weeks, we are going to follow a map to find a treasure along the Roman road. In this series, kids will travel down the Roman road, learning life-giving verses along the way on a journey from sin and separation from God to peace and eternal life with God. An X, rather, a cross marks the spot for the greatest treasure year anyone could ever find eternal life with Jesus. And you can check us out on We Are Hillside the Church forward slash kids, Hillside Kids, or the Facebook page. Welcome and thank you for joining us at Hillside Church. We are so glad that you've decided to make this a part of your day. And we invite you to join in in any and all aspects that you feel comfortable with. We're going to sing some songs and you'll see the lyrics appear along the bottom like this. And we're going to join together in reading scripture and in a moment of prayer. And there'll be a biblically grounded message to help us as we discuss fears that control our lives. And so as we enter in this time, if you would like to connect with us, please feel free to go to this URL or to scan this QR code, and we would love to get back to you and connect with you and join you in your spiritual journey. So let's take this time to gather ourselves together and to enter into a time of worship. Well, from wherever you are this morning, that is the house of the Lord. So let's raise our voices and praise him together this morning. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. Parted the raging sea, my God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise We sing to the God who heals We sing to the God who saves We sing to the God who always makes a way Cause he hung upon that cross And he rose up from that grave My God still rolls the stone away of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. the beggars now we're royalty we were the prisoners now we're running free we are forgiven accepted redeemed by his grace let the house of the lord sing praise there's joy in the house of the lord there's joy in the house of the lord today and we won't be quiet Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. 
how great the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name so much different today than even seven years ago when I finally accepted Jesus. I thought I could do it on my own and I can't, but knowing he's there, knowing he's walking beside me, I'm never alone. I have learned from life that it is better to try 
and make a mistake than to do nothing. Though knowledge and understanding comes from a classroom, a good old fashioned mistake is where experience is gained. The greatest lesson I've learned in life is that if you don't ask, usually you won't receive. A life lesson I would like to pass on is this. In Matthew 18, Jesus said, it is not God's will that anyone should be lost. Therefore, it's vitally important that I see everyone as someone for whom Christ died. Life has taught me that there's a big difference between wants and needs. And God has supplied all of my needs and provided for me just as he said he would. His love for me and you is as vast and as endless and as wide as the ocean.
Church, please join me this morning in prayer. Uh, it's good to uh, meet with you all, even if it is online. And just take a few moments or a few minutes uh, to focus with me and enjoy your coffee or whatever you're having as we come to God in prayer this morning. Lord, your word tells us that we should rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. We come to you this morning, Lord, with uh, praise and worship and thanks. Uh, we give you thanks for what we have. We praise you, Lord, that you are an awesome God uh, that looks after our needs, uh, even in these times of trouble. Father, we pray this morning for those who have COVID and those in hospital. Uh, we pray for their healing. We lift them up to you. Uh, we pray for those, Lord, that have lost loved ones during this time and uh, maybe have not been able to grieve properly. Uh, we lift up those, Lord, that are suffering uh, because of COVID through uh, mental distress or uh, financial reasons or, Lord, just uh, physically. They uh, they just need your help, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would lift them up this morning and, and uh, grant them a peace and the strength as they uh, get through this, Father. Father, pray this morning for the, the sick in our community, in our church community. Uh, we lift up those suffering, uh, Lord, from cancer, for especially Pat, Lord, and Rexford. And uh, we just ask you, Lord, that you would give them an inner strength and uh, that you would uh, heal them as well, Father. We trust in your, in your healing, Lord, and we lift them up to you today. Father, I pray as we go through our transition time, uh, as we look for a replacement for Pastor Jay and, and Pastor Sharon, Lord, that you would be with Wyman and the board as they, they seek your wisdom, Lord. Uh, we ask, Lord, that uh, your Holy Spirit be uh, with everything that they do. And uh, Lord, that you would uh, provide us with who you want to be here. And uh, we just look to you for that, Father, this morning. Father, I pray for the message. Uh, we uh, ask that you open up our mind and our hearts and that the words, Lord, would be your words. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for this week, uh, for allowing us to be together. And uh, we just ask these things, Father, in your will and in your name. Amen. Life is full of surprises. It's often unpredictable. You spill your coffee. Your kid calls you before your big presentation at work because they're sick and need a ride home. You hit a deer on the way home from work. Your big vacation you've been planning for years gets canceled because of a global pandemic. You get the picture. Life is full of variables. And in the midst of all the variables of life, it's easy to feel like life is running out of control. Like all you want is something steady, unchanging, something constant. Here's the good news. Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Join us over the next four weeks as we discover how Jesus can be our anchor in a world full of variables. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Hillside and to our worship this morning. I'm glad you are joining with us today. This has been a week of change and transition since last Sunday. You may know that uh, I tendered my resignation to Hillside as lead pastor to be effective near the end of June, 1st of July. And that was last Sunday at the end of our service. And this week, I just wanna say thank you for your kindness, for the many ways in which you have reached out to encourage and to share your love and to just support uh, what we believe God is stirring in us for our next chapter of ministry. And as well, we know together that this is a time of transition. It is a time where we are going to have to keep trusting and praying that God will lead all of our lives. We are so excited about what God has in store for Hillside because God is in control. This is his church. And whoever God leads and brings forward as the next lead pastor, we believe that he will be in that 
and he will help a new lead pastor and a congregation known as Hillside to merge together and to team up to do the work of the ministry. So we're excited about what God has in store, and uh, we believe that he has uh, great things. You know, as I think of just the way in which uh, we have faced these days and faced this week, uh, it is just beautiful to see uh, the, the unity of the body. And I just pray that we will continue to experience that going forward, that we will be able to see God do great things uh, even in these days. We're going to cherish the, the final months we have with you, and we'll enjoy fellowship and friendship and ministry together. And I'd like to pray for us here uh, as we kind of bring this idea before us and also prepare for the message today. So let me pray. God, thank you for the opportunity we have had and for these remaining months that we will be able to uh, just join and link arms together in ministry. I thank you for it. And I pray, God, you would continue to pour out your blessing upon Hillside, that you will be preparing the next lead pastor for the process and the interviews and the, the ways in which they will be able to engage as the next leader here at Hillside. And I pray that, God, you would just bring such great unity and harmony among the people of Hillside, that together they will, everyone will realize the importance of, of working together and standing together and stepping into what's happening in the life of the ministry. And so I pray, God, that you will just bless and you will pour out your spirit upon this whole process. And I ask, God, that you will be with us now as we go into this message and into this new series. And I pray that you will speak to our hearts through it. We give you thanks and we give you praise in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I want to take us into the beginning of a new series today that uh, I am super excited about. And I believe it is going to be so helpful to us in the journey that we are on right now. The series title is called Constant. And the subtitle is Finding an Anchor in a world of variables. Finding an anchor in a world of variables. You know, there are two significant verses that I think are going to keep weaving themselves into this series, and they're both from the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 19 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And this anchor is, of course, this man named Jesus. And so we have Jesus as an anchor for our soul. We're going to talk about that through this series. And then Hebrews chapter 13, verses 8 and 9 say this, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now we're going to add in tomorrow. So it's going to be yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. So we can make it a four-part series over these next four weeks in the month of February. But Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever, your strength comes from God's grace. So we're going to just continue into this series with these uh, passages kind of rich in our minds. You know, you and I, we have faced some serious changes in the last two years. We have had to adapt and had to adjust and had to pivot over and over again. So we understand what it's like in a day like today to have a lot of changes. But I recently saw something, maybe you saw it as well. If you were to take a 50-year period, say from 1970 to 2020, in that 50-year period of which I have been able to live in that uh, time frame, there have been so many changes, so many differences. And we just go, wow, it's hard to believe. But if you were to actually go back 50 years from 1970 to 1920 to 1970, that 50-year period, oh my, there are some amazing and uh, world-changing events that took place even in that 50-year period. And of course, if he went from 1920 to 2020, in the last 100 years, so many things have changed. And it, it's just continuing at exponential rates, this idea of change. And when you think of variables, that word variables, it basically says, in the, in the dictionary, it says an element, a feature, or a factor that is liable to vary or change. Or another way it said is too many variables involved to make a meaningful prediction. 
Isn't that so true in our lives that there can be so many variables that there's, there's apt to be some kind of change? And when we live in this kind of a world and in our daily lives, sometimes it can feel as though we don't really have solid ground. It feels like we need an anchor. And that anchor is going to be Jesus. Now, I'm not going to keep talking about currently what we face because that's going to be next week. But I want to talk on this word yesterday, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday. And when we think of yesterday, we're going to think about the past, of things that have happened, of ways that we can look to days gone by and what that means in our lives and what's that mean for our faith and and in what ways have we maybe carried decisions that we made yesterday or regrets that we have held on to since yesterday or wrongs or traumas done to us yesterday in the past. And in what ways can we see there is a faithful God There's a God who has been through all of this over time and eternity who understands the past and he wants to redeem the past. He wants to make sure that we live in what is a present and future mindset. But we're going to talk about yesterday today. And I want to take us to two stories from the scriptures that uh, are speaking about, actually, in these two stories, about two different women in those stories that we're going to see some interesting ways that the past and yesterday and a backstory is involved in these accounts. I'm going to start with John chapter 4, John chapter 4, and the story of the Samaritan woman. Now, let me just kind of give you the picture of what's happening here in John chapter 4. It begins with the fact that uh, Jesus was leaving Judea. He was returning to Galilee, and uh, he had to go through Samaria on the way. Now, that might not mean anything to many people when you read that in verse 4. He had to go through Samaria. Well, that's actually quite a big deal because the Jewish people and the Samaritans uh, didn't coexist. They didn't actually like each other. You're going to see that in a later verse as well. And so for Jesus to go through Samaria was like, okay, is that the right thing to do? Shouldn't you just actually go around and not even go through Samaria? So there's an interesting backstory there just by itself because there was just a lot of dislike between the Jewish people and the Samaritans. But he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, and uh, there was a field there with a well, and that well goes back to Jacob, who gave it to his son Joseph. Another backstory, a backstory of Jacob, who was a leader in the time for the nation Israel when he had 12 sons, and Joseph being one of those sons. And you may remember the story of those 11 sons, or 10 actually, who didn't like Joseph, and they discarded him. They sold him off. They basically uh, treated treated him as if he was dead. And Then the story comes around that Joseph became a great uh, leader, a second leader for Egypt, that he was able to bless his brothers. And what comes out of that story is one of the most profound ways that you and I need to look at events in our life. And it's this statement that what was meant for evil, God turned for good. You know, we could just stop right now. We could spend a lot of time on this topic of yesterday, things that were meant for evil in our lives, things that were meant to ruin us or to tear us down. And yet God has a way of redeeming it and restoring it and reconciling it so that it's meant for good in the end. That right there is golden all by itself, but we're just getting started on the story. And this is the story of Jesus at this well that Jacob gave to his son. So anyhow, let's continue because there's more to come. As he sat there at the well in this passage in chapter 4, the disciples had gone in to town to find food, and a Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water. And Jesus begins a conversation with her, which is really quite amazing because when you look at verse 9 in John chapter 4, it says, "...the woman was surprised." For Jews refuse to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? 
So here's another backstory, another reality for this woman who is not only Samaritan, she's female. And you see, ladies and women were not really regarded as true people and had rights and privileges. They were just kind of objects that were there. And so here she was going, what are you doing? Like, first of all, you're Jewish and you're man, and I'm a Samaritan, I'm a woman, and you're talking to me like, what is that all about? What's so beautiful about that is Jesus wasn't concerned about the fact that she was a Samaritan or a woman. She was a person, and he wanted to make sure she was valued, and he elevated her, and he recognized her as beautiful and wonderful and a a person that he was going to interact with. And oh my goodness, if there's anybody who's listening today that wonders, would Jesus ever want to interact with me? I mean, I'm not anybody. I'm a nobody. I don't have any value. And people actually think of me as kind of like, you know, half-breed or just, you know, not with it. But Jesus loves you, and he wants the best for you. And so we even get to see him interacting with this Samaritan woman as part of the story. But let's carry on because there's even more of what is going to happen here. He keeps the conversation going. And then the, the conversation goes to this idea of living water. Living water that can satisfy, living water that can quench all of the things that have happened in our life, all of the sin and all of the junk that just wants to crud up our lives, there can be new living water in Jesus. And he's explaining this to her, and he's talking to her about her relationships. And and she's like, well, I want to go uh, back and, and get some people and talk to my family. He goes, yeah, I know all about your family. I know about your past. I know about the fact that you actually were married five times and now the man you're with is not your husband. And I'm aware of that. And you would have to think that she is like, oh my goodness, like how does he know this? What is he, a psychic? (laughs) What is he, like somebody that, that can read minds? I mean, how does he know this? And we see this conversation happening between Jesus and this woman and it's so amazing that that he is loving her and he is caring for her even in the midst of anything that has happened in her past. So amazing. We see the disciples come back. This is kind of crazy. In verse 27, you can actually see the ways in which they are uh, recognizing their, or we can recognize their Jewish background. It says in verse 27, just then his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman, but none of them had the nerve to ask. (laughs) So here were these men like, what are you doing? Like, you're not supposed to be doing this. Like, don't you know in the past that this is the way we are supposed to function? We're supposed to, you know, kind of operate as people. And and Jesus just kind of blew past that. He was saying, listen, there are things here that, that you don't get. There are things here that are way more important and bigger than what you're seeing right now. And that, that, that conversation takes place. And then what I want you to see is the woman decides that she is going to go into the village, as it said, and she says in verse 29, come and see the man who told me everything I ever did. Could he possibly be the Messiah? You see, Jesus knows, God knows everything about our lives, everything that's ever happened. There is nothing that is beyond his understanding. And so for each of us, if we are living lives where we are living, say, in the state of shame or embarrassment, or we're hiding from what we think is what we don't want people to know about us, the truth, but God knows. But here's the good news. What we find and what we discover in this passage is this woman goes to tell everybody in the village and they come to experience this man, Jesus, the anchor of our soul. And he is the one to help them to really begin to experience transformation in their lives. And this is what's happening for them. They are believing. They are finding it in verses 39 down to verse 42. They're experiencing a transformation. Now we believe not just because of what you told us, but because we have heard from him ourselves. 
You know, I can speak to you as much as I possibly can and try to affirm and try to encourage you that Jesus loves you. Jesus wants to redeem everything about your life and my life. But it's when we really hear the voice of God that says, you're forgiven, you're past. It's not what I'm going to hold against you. It's not that at all. I want to redeem you. I want to set you free. I want you to have the experience of life that takes you from yesterday into today, tomorrow, and forever. And this is the kind of God to whom we can call out to and ask him to reveal himself to us, that we would be able to move past the past and experience everything God has for us today and going forward. Let's go on to the next story. The next story is from John chapter 8, verses 2 to 11. And this is the story of the woman who was caught in the act of adultery. You know, every time I've read the story and heard the story, it seems like as long as I can remember, is always that feeling of, well, where's the man? I mean, why are we just singling out the woman here? Why are we not identifying both the male and the female in this situation. If you're going to try and bring some kind of a judgment, it takes two. So why are you just bringing the woman? Well, of course, part of this could be certainly that uh, it reveals the, the male-dominant culture of the day and the fact that you know, they're trying to, dis- again, disregard and, and uh, you know, just degradate women in this situation. And so we're going to try and do that. But we also know, we can also see in this passage, that that they are trying to trap Jesus. Uh, You can see it there in verse 6, chapter 8, verse 6. They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him. So they were almost trying to bring something forward that was going to maybe get him off of his game to say something that would trap him and, and they could use it against him. And so what's beautiful in this passage is how Jesus handles this. And how he goes about this. Here he was teaching at the temple. Here come these religious leaders. And they almost like want to embarrass and create a scene that is going to stir up uh, maybe an emotion or stir up some kind of reaction from Jesus. It's going to trap him. And so in verse 4, we see this, this woman. That's, that's what they say. This woman. And so then again, there's this backstory that women were not uh, believed to be equal. They were not uh, people to be valued And beautifully, Jesus is just saying, no, this woman is someone that needs value, needs love, needs care for all that has happened in her life. And so Jesus gives the most powerful, most penetrating, most pointed statement that could be given to a group of men in this situation. It really could speak to us today as well, right? He says, all right, let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. If you've never sinned, if you're perfect, if you've never done anything wrong, go ahead. You'd you be the first one. You, you do it. And of course, we see one by one, the oldest first, oldest ones leaving first. No one could throw a stone because they recognized in their past, sin was there. And each of us, we have to come to the grips with that too, right? We have to come to grips with the fact that we are sinners. We're separated from God. We, we need a savior. We need one who will redeem us and will set us free from this sin that keeps us bound. So they got it. But then what's powerful is what Jesus would say to this woman. He says, where are those who are condemning you? Where, where are they? And uh, then he says, you know what? I'm not condemning you. I'm inviting you to move forward now and sin no more. I'm inviting you into a new adventure whereby you're going to be able to experience the present and the future in a more powerful way than what you have ever experienced before. You see, so many times I think people can get caught up with this idea or this belief that Jesus wants to condemn us that he wants to hold things against us. That it's like, well, that's the past, and you know what? The past is something we're going to just kind of heap on, more guilt and more shame and more embarrassment and more regret for all of the things in our past. Now, Jesus doesn't ignore it. He doesn't deny that there is a past, 
But what he's been doing for each of us and what he's doing in these passages is he's saying, look, yesterday was a day I was there as well, and I understand and I know all that's happened in your past. But here's what I want you to experience. I want you to experience the beauty and the wonder and the greatness of what I can do to redeem you so that you will think more about your future and about the ways that I can transform you and give you freedom. And I don't want you to define your life by your past. Now, the evil one, that's what the evil one wants to do. The evil one, Satan, wants to continue to bring up the past, wants to continue to make us feel shame and cause us to feel embarrassment and to deny and stay away and avoid talking about the things of the past. Now, when we have been redeemed, we don't have to keep going back there and bringing those things up and giving it too much glory. But we also have to recognize if there are things that in our lives that are still influencing us and negatively hurting our current day walk with God, things of the past, Jesus came to redeem that. Jesus came to set us free from that. And he came to help us to recognize no longer do we have to think about those things and talk about those things and worry about those things and let those things dominate our minds and our thinking. Jesus has the ability to be the anchor for our soul today. And I want to invite you to truly release the past into the hands of God, into the arms of Jesus, to let the Holy Spirit of God bring a healing, to bring hope, to bring renewal, that those things did happen, but they're in the past. I'm not going to be defined by the past. I'm going to be defined by the miracle working power of Jesus today and going forward. And I'm going to trust him. And I'm going to continue to devote myself to him and his purposes and believe that he has continued things. And if any time in the future there's something of a trigger or something of the baggage of the past that comes, I'm committing it to Jesus. I've already got my mind made up that I want to give it to the Lord. And I want him to be the Lord who redeems my past the yesterday where he was there, he understands, he gets it, that now I can truly experience all that he has for me today and going forward. That's my invitation to each of us today. And as we go through these next Sundays, as we talk about today and tomorrow and the future forever and how God wants to speak to us and help us in our journey of faith, I pray that we will be able to just open our hearts and our minds to everything that God has for us in this series. In just a moment, we're going to sing, and we're going to commit this to the Lord. We're going to just let God speak to us through his Holy Spirit. If there's anything that we're holding on to, if there's anything that we're still saying, this is who I am today because of what I did in the past, Jesus wants to redeem that. He wants to give you a new future. He wants to do amazing things in your life, and I want to pray that the Holy Spirit will just pour down on us and that we will be open to hearing from him and we'll just commit everything unto him. Let's pray. God, thank you for what you're doing right now. Thank you for anything that may be coming to, our, to the surface that the evil one is trying to remind us of what we did wrong or what happened in the past that is just causing us to feel so much shame or embarrassment or things that we just uh, we don't want to go there. But God, you're bringing that up or you're allowing that to come so you can take it. We can give it to you. We can just say, okay, here it is. I just hand it to you, God. I release it into your care. And I'm receiving all of the grace and all the mercy and all the forgiveness and all the cleansing and all of the purity that you want to do in my life going forward. And so, God, would you do amazing things in our hearts and in our lives today or whenever anybody is watching this. I pray, God, that it would just speak to us. And Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts and lives as we sing, as we worship together in these next few moments. In your name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. As we sing, just let the Spirit of God speak to you and let's worship him and let the transforming power of God change us today. Let's sing and worship together. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come? 
the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus behind your regrets and mistakes come today there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling bring your sorrows and trade them for joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come to the altar. It's our opportunity to be able to just bring it to the Lord and to experience all that he has to, for us. And I pray that today has been helpful and you will just be able to take this forward into the week ahead. Uh, I want to thank you for listening. I want to thank you if maybe today for the very first time uh, you're sensing God speaking to you about what it means to have a personal and meaningful relationship with him. And maybe you have heard of or you have just come to understand God as one who's just going to keep heaping on all of the guilt and all of the sins of our life that, that it's just going to be a drudgery to walk with God. You know, uh, we have to be aware of what we've done, but God wants to redeem it. He wants to set us free. So I pray that uh, you're open to that. Maybe you want to begin a relationship with Jesus, and I'd love to pray for that even right now. So God, thank you for the opportunities that we have to take steps of faith. And for an individual that may be watching and worshiping today, maybe today is the first day to commit their life into your care and to trust that, God, you're going to bring about amazing transformation, just like the woman at the well, just like the woman caught in adultery, just like so many other accounts that we read in the Bible or other accounts of people we know that the experience of transformation and salvation and redemption has taken place. So I pray, God, that there would be individuals who for the very first time would say, I accepted Jesus today. I accepted his love, his forgiveness, his grace. And I pray that, God, you would just do a beginning work that 
that we could just encourage and fan that flame of, of salvation in their life. And I pray as well, God, for everybody that we will just go into this week ahead, empowered by your spirit, ready to walk forward into this day and tomorrow and forever with Jesus as our anchor. Thank you, Lord, for these things. We pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us today and being a part of our worship. If you accepted Jesus today, uh, there's a link there that uh, you can click, and we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to be able to encourage you and pray for you and, and come alongside you in this journey of faith. So just click that link, and we'll be happy to follow up with you and uh, get in touch with us. We would love for that to take place. Well, as we go forward now into this week ahead, I pray that we will just continue to trust God will lead us. Uh, stay tuned as we also are tuned into the way in which we're doing things as a province and restrictions and meetings. So just stay tuned as we give those updates as that comes along. And we'll look forward to how God continues to meet with us and bless us in these days. If I can just declare Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 over us. And now may the God of hope who fills us all with joy and peace as we trust in him. May each of us be filled to overflowing with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you folks. Have a great week ahead. We'll look forward to worshiping again next Sunday online at Hillside. God bless.